Hello guys, today we're looking at SUVs but 4x4 SUVs so they have to just have the off-road capability as well as the sort of soft-road capability and we're trying to go a little bit left field with some of some of these so not the absolute obvious choices in some of them some of them are but some of them aren't and uh, let's see what we can get for under five grand you'll be surprised by how good some of these are actually for under five grand but as always check them out i've recently done a video on used car checks so follow all the the things in the checklist uh, before you go to buy any kind of used car but also consider just paying a mobile mechanic for an hour or two of their time to come out and check over the car with you and to give it a test drive with you and get underneath it and have a good inspection um, most of them are absolutely happy to do that it's, a, it's an easy bit of work for them and it just gives you that extra bit of peace of mind doesn't it but yeah let's have a look we're um, no fluff so we get straight into it and let me know what you think okay so i'm going to get things kicked straight off in this one no fluff here folks off we go we're going to start things off by looking at skoda yeti uh, this one's a 2011 model two litre diesel just under four grand on the price which seems decent Seventy-four thousand miles on it and running costs 46 mpg 210 quid a year on the road tax um, everyone knows i've mentioned it several times before used to have a yeti i really like the yeti i think it's a brilliant car to drive very practical quite a quirky little thing and i know they're a bit marmite in terms of looks but i think they're phenomenal little cars really make a lot of sense to a lot of people and they're surprisingly decent in four-wheel drive um, i had to an attend, attend a funeral when we were absolutely had a, a snowstorm and um, the road was almost ice up to the top of the curb it was it was pretty mental outside i had a, an a4 at the time couldn't get the thing off the drive even got in the yeti and it just ate ate the thing up it was absolutely fine no issues with it whatsoever so yeah very capable little cars they've won lots and lots of awards didn't they when they came out and um still surprising for me that skoda stopped making it but there we go you know uh, lovely condition all round, very clean and tidy, tidy interior, low mileage, excellent drive, part exchange considered, delivery available anywhere. No mention of service history there, is there? Okay, so that's something to look into. On to the next. Right, this one's a Vauxhall, uh, a Vauxhall? Ooh. A Volvo XC90 2004 model. There's an automatic, this one, so... First thing is, you want to make sure that automatic gearbox has been uh, serviced. And if it hasn't, get it serviced. Full dealership history, which is good, so that suggests it will have been serviced at some point. Um, last service, 68,000 miles. It's currently 69,000 miles. Timing belt changed at 60,000. Great. Automatic, full beige leather interior, seven seats, Bluetooth, electric windows, cruise control, climate control, two keys. This could be quite a nice example we've got here folks obviously do your due diligence with any cars you go and look for I've just done a video on that which I'll put a link to in the corner of the screen and if in doubt get a mechanic to look the car over that's a very tidy very very tidy example isn't it decent mileage on as well I mean they're great cars I know they're showing their age a little bit in terms of looks but it's not a hideous looking thing, is it? Five grand for that. 69,000 miles. Running costs, uh, 340 quid a year in tax, 31 MPG. Take that with a pinch of salt, as always. Right, next, the blue Lexus RX 350. It's a 3.5 litre SE spec. These are, I don't know, they're not exciting cars, are they? But probably very capable. Is I've I've never actually driven one, but that that would be my take on it, sort of from the outside in. Is um, not very exciting, but probably very capable. Six hundred quid a year tax and twenty five mpg, so it's a thirsty one, a very thirsty one. Quite a nice interior. They they're fairly good looking cars. Nice bit of plastic wood in there. We all love a bit of that, don't we? Not. Beautiful condition facelift model, comes with sat nav, full leather seats, reverse parking camera, cruise control, twin front heated seats, MOT until November, probably want a new one on that wouldn't you, full service history records along with 10 service stamps, viewing by appointment only, blah blah blah, okay. Right next, 
So with some of these cars, this being one, you might want to buy two. Um, one to drive and then one to keep all your spare parts and your big bags of cash to run it and repair it and maintain it. This is definitely one of those, I would say. So it's a V8 Range Rover 2003 model, only done 80,000 miles. Range Rover HSE, which is a decent spec one, company owned, so fully serviced and maintained. Recent alternator battery, steering rack and pump, running on low mileage, 18 inch general grabber tires, but come in with a set of 19 inch Wranglers, virtually new on Range Rover alloys for mud and snow conditions. Fit with rear dog guard, fitted, fit tow hook and electrics, uh, kept in storage for the last four years. MOT until 21st of October. Aircon just regassed, so working beautifully. Now, kept in storage could be good, could be bad. Sometimes when cars just stand and they don't do anything, if they're not sort of nursed out of hibernation and taken a bit of care of when you get them restarted and regoing, you could have problems. Also a chance for seals and things to go and just bushes and things like that still go, even though a car's not moving, they perish. So um, 80,000 miles, it says it's got, got full service history, but um, obviously you would want to thoroughly inspect that. And if you're buying, most, I, I mean, I say it with everything, you know, take a mechanic with you and do all the normal checks that are in my used car checks videos. It's a great idea to just pay a mobile mechanic for a couple of hours to come and look over a car, especially so when it's Jaguar Land Rover. It's a nice looking car though, isn't it? Very nice looking car. Okay, guys, just a quick reminder to give the video a thumbs up. It helps massively if you do. And my channel's growing incredibly slowly. So please give this channel or this video a shout out on social media and tell your friends about it. Also, if you want to help me out and help the channel out, look in the links in the description and look at the first comment where I've pinned something that you can click on and help me out and hopefully get something good out of it for yourself at the same time. Thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate the support. Right, the Hyundai. Here we go. Hyundai Tucson, 2011, uh, 2007, two-litre limited, 140 horsepower. So it's not going to be the quickest thing on the road, this one. But 39 MPG, 315 quid on the tax. Performance-wise, 13.8 seconds to 60. So it's slow. Again, it's not an exciting car, is it? But it's probably fairly capable off-road. Reasonably comfortable interior, plenty of space, and it would probably live up to a reasonable amount of abuse. Um, only 66,000 miles on that one. It's a three-pedal car, it's manual, so 3,445 quid. Right, next is a 2010 Subaru Forester. I've moved on to eBay here, as you can see. I was previously on Auto Trader, but I've moved on to eBay for the rest of the cars. Subaru Forester is a big old motor. It's a big box of diesel engine in it. You know, full 90s spec on that interior trim, isn't it? It couldn't be any more 90s if it tried, even though it's from 2010. Okay, let's have a read. Probably the cleanest example, full leather heated seats, rear parking sensors, side steps, CD auto changes, steering wheel mounted, audio, cruise control, front rear electric windows, blah, blah, blah. Is there any mention of service history? No, absolutely bugger all. Is there anything up here about it? No, nothing. It's done 102,000 miles. There's no mention of service history. I mean, car like that's good for, for decent mileage, but um, you want service history. Must have service history and it must have good service history. Right, 2009 Nissan X-Trail. These are very popular uh, four-wheel drive cars. And a lot of people were, were sort of quite sad when they, when they changed these things. Um, you see a lot of these on the road still that are donkey's years old and have done half a million miles and they seem to go on and on. Always, as always, do your checks, you know. Get Check your service history over. Do all the normal checks. But new MOT, warranty, service history, although we don't know how much. Finance, blah, 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 blah. I hate this so much in car ads when they just tell you about their garage or all the different things they do and nothing about the car. Our prices are checked daily, we don't care. 4,875 quid, it's got 93,000 miles on it, it's a manual gearbox. Once again, check that service history very, very carefully, but they're good, solid off-road cars. 
2019 VW Touareg 2.5 TDI. This one's got 105,000 miles on it. 12 months MOT, full service history and loads of service invoices. That's good. Two keys, nationwide delivery, blah, blah, blah. Let's have a look at this. Again, very capable off-road car. I mean, they're showing their age a little bit now, I guess, but still quite good looking cars. Plenty of room in the back there. Plenty of, of uh, passenger space in the cabin. Yeah, it looks quite tidy. I'm not sure why it's got that on it. I think there's two roof bars actually squashed together, but so you just pull the front bit forwards. But yeah, that's one to have a think about. Isn't it? How much is that? 4,190 quid. Not bad. Not bad. Right, look at this big beast. You may have noticed here, by the way, I'm I'm going slightly not off the wall, but I'm going to I'm looking at slightly different cars, things that you may not have considered initially. Jeep Grand Cherokee. Oh, it's been lifted. Look at that. It's had a lift kit on it. I love this for all the wrong reasons, but I love this. I just love a lifted car. I think it looks cool. Maybe I'm a redneck. I don't know. I think that looks absolutely epic. Look at that thing. I love it. I mean, that's awful. If you designed that, would you be sent to The Hague for war crimes? I'm not sure. But, yeah, that plastic wood looks absolutely toilet. I would definitely want to get that wrapped. Um, on this kind of car, I'd probably even have a go at doing it myself. Quite a nice cabin, though, isn't it? Tiny bitches. All right, that looks good. Ah. Oh. It's a Cat C or a Cat D. A real head turner. This lift kit combined with off-road general grabber tyres really looks the business for full leather seats, electric sunroof, 12 months MOT, passed today. Quality discs and pads all round, engine service. Took this in part exchange on a 30 grand F pace for five and a half grand from a local business owner that showed me minor damage that was repaired years ago. Since then, his family's owned it. New 0% interest free finance. Okay, 88,000 miles it's done. Um, there's no mention of service history, is there? Is there? Anything? No mention of service history, but I'm going to guess it probably has got it. But you would definitely, definitely want to check that out, wouldn't you? But I just think that looks so cool. Yes. Right, 2008 Land Rover Discovery 3. 2.7 TD V6 HSE 7 seat auto. Right, these things are slow. Right, I've driven a couple of these and they are slow, but they're massively popular, aren't they? And they are absolutely gigantic. You can fit your kids, someone else's kids in, your dog, someone else's dog, couple of bikes, couple of suitcases. You know, it'll all go in this thing. It's the rear, the the back row seats that pop up there. 2008 Disco 3 TDV6 HSE. Fantastic condition inside now. No dents or damage and rust free. MOT on, until December 2021. 92,000 miles and a full service history. <clears throat> I've owned this car for six years. It's never let me down. Drives great with no faults. Fully loaded with it being an HSE model. Comes with two keys, tow bar, air conditioning, cruise control, alloys. Chrome trim, side steps, Bluetooth, electric windows and mirrors, sat nav, leather heated seats front and back, sunroofs, privacy glass. It's got all the spec going, isn't it? I'd say with these things, they're just so practical, but don't expect it to be quick. Uh, also, just look at reliability issues and common faults on a Disco 3. You will find some. And look specifically at that engine because you want to know if there's anything that's specific to that engine rather than to the model as a whole. But yeah, there you go. Disco 3, 3,950 quid with full service history um, and 92,000 miles apparently. So there you go, one to think about. Right, this one here is another absolute guzzler of a car. It's a 2001 BMW X5, 4.4 V8. And I don't know, these things, are, I'm sh sure some of these cars we're talking about now are going to be modern classics. And you're going to see these things at car shows in years to come for particularly nice examples. Especially like the huge V8s because, I mean, they're just a dying breed, aren't they? 
still quite a nice interior. It hasn't hasn't dated that much really, and it still looks good on the outside as well. Yeah, nice looking car. Ooh, three thousand nine hundred and fifty quid, seventy three thousand miles. Full service history. Okay, so you inspect that vigorously. Metallic paint, parking aid front, seats, electric memory, driver, leather upholstery, trip computer, electric windows, in-car entertainment, radio cassette. Wow, it's got radio cassette. Nice. But yeah, that's a good looking car. And if it's kosher, I don't think it's terrible money. I mean, you're going to have to pay that to probably go to the end of your street in petrol. And that again in um, road tax and, uh, you know... Anything else, any any repairs it needs are probably going to be pricey, but, you know, it is what it is. Right, just to finish things off, I wanted to give you something a little bit left field, shall we say. And people are always looking at SUVs nowadays, but don't forget the good old pickup. There are plenty of double cab pickups knocking around now that are fantastic off-road. A um, good friend of mine's got one of these. It's a Hilux 4x4. So it's got a nice dent in it there. Oh yeah, you can see it better there, look. An interesting gear knob there as well. That could probably do with being replaced. And I would say a functional interior. But that's what it is, isn't it? It's a functional vehicle. It's a commercial vehicle really, isn't it? Um, 146,000 miles on this one. So it needs to have the best service history you've ever seen, but if it if it has been serviced properly, it'll just go on forever in a day. Double cab pickup, manual diesel, four doors, four by four, O six plate, power assisted steering, tilt and steering wheel, adjustable seats, driver passenger airbag, electric windows, air con, alloy wheels, chrome side bars, load liner, blah 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 blah. No VAT. Uh, 4,600 quid. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.